Oh, this is a worse start. <laughs> the most winning pack one pick one here is probably either Preordain or Fractured. Maybe Glenn. I kind of want to take Sneak. What's this Golos? I haven't Golos in a bit. Golos is pretty open ended. You can kind of just take whatever you want. Such that you have some sweet five color curve. Oh, the Warsaw Village Band, Rourke. Warsaw Village Band. American Dream, that particular song is really interesting. I was, uh, so Warsaw Village Band is a, is a folk band from, I think they're Polish, from Poland, and they, uh, they get their lyrics, they get their songs, they play a lot of old folk tunes from, like, hundreds of years ago, from, like, the 1800s and 1600s and, and like, way back when. And to get these songs, they went and they talked to old farmers in the middle of nowhere, like super old folks that like don't have teeth anymore. So, so they're actually a very difficult band to uh, to translate because <laughs> they're getting they're getting the songs from these old toothless farmers that are that also have an accent, you know, because they're they're growing up in the boonies. So it's like weird for them to pronounce words because they don't have a, their, all their teeth, and then then they're also like accented on top of that. And they play the songs as faithfully as they can. So with the song "American Dream," I was like really interested in what a song from like a few hundred years ago called "American Dream," set in Poland, was gonna what that emphasis was gonna be, what that was gonna be like. So I threw a I threw out a call on Twitter. I was like, "Yo, do any of my do any of my uh, viewers can any of my viewers translate old timey Polish for me?" And uh, and I actually got a few like really good translations. That song is specifically about. I'm mean, gonna should draft something. God, I don't even know what I want. I don't want any of this. Let's take this. Force Negation is hot. I don't I think we're gonna have blue cards though for Golosing. Could take Pilgrim. I think I just grab Tundra, huh? Just grab this nice piece of fixing. We already have Signet. Maybe the fetch is better. It's weird, but yeah, maybe the fetch is just better. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm taking Psalm. What was I talking about? Oh, cultivate. Let's grab that. Oh, so the song itself. I was I was I was telling the backstory to how I found the story for for that American Dream song. Basically, uh, it's about um, a couple of parents that sell their farm and and like leave their kids so that they can travel to America. And then when they're on the boat, the mom starts crying because they left their kids behind. It's just, just a very different bent to it than uh, than you would get from like a from an American song called American Dream from like the same time period, right? Super interesting. All these X spells are not good hits for Golos. I think we still want Crasis. Anyway, yeah, real real mournful mournful ditty. Yeah, it's called American Dream, but it was made by the people that stayed behind. The people that stayed behind in Poland. Oh, Preordain coming back. I'll draft a Preordain. So the reason to take Huntmaster over Acidic Slime here is in case we get um, Niv-Mizzet, huh? That we care about our gold count. I think that's good enough for me. It's a valid enough reason. Written by the kids that were left behind? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little, um... Uh... 
Being gener generous on the kids' part. And then they wept for us! I'm enjoying being released from having to draft Mono Red. I, mean, I never had to draft Mono Red. I did because I'm overly competitive and I wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, I think I drafted Monocolor Aggro like about half the time. I just went through and uploaded all the VODs. And that was about the ratio. Fun seeing me in competitive mode. Yeah, I don't do that super often on my streams. Oh, wow. Tracker or Elder. They're both so good. I'm going to take the Elder, but man. Man, Tracker's good. 23 to 25, Grimace. This is some nice lands. I kind of want the Noble. Noble's a good one. How do the players' teams get chosen? Well, last year the grudge match was just Team J-Bro versus Jim Davis. And this year they decided to make it a team event. And so those were the two team captains. Yeah, I guess I'll draft a channel. Eldrazi are like really nice Golos hits too. So if we get some oh, big old honk in Eldrazi, we'll be pretty happy about it. Hey, Joe the Thumb, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 32 months. Never did you think you would be sub to this talking head for 32 months? Wow, that's all I am to you. Just a talking head. I think we're grabbing Omnath here. Maybe I'm supposed to take the carry tid and then Omnath wheels. Or the Lumbering Falls. Let's try and wheel it. That's kind of a late library. Actual orders here too. Uro. Uro was in there. Oh, well. Speaker's pretty dope. I think I want the Mind Twist. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Bobo Triple O. Thanks for resubbing. So 48 months. Merry Cube Darf to all! And to all, a good Darf. Hey, Rourke. Thanks for gifting us up to Strategist. Not Strategist. Omnath has been underwhelming for you. It is not. It has not been underwhelming for me. And this is like the perfect deck for it. We got like fucking Cultivate, Secure Tribe Builder, Solemn, a Fetch Land, Golos. A lot of ways of getting extra land drops into play. <laughs> I like it, Jasper. Uh, I would not Timid Assassin. I think that would... That would stop making it be a race, right? One of the cool ways about how it's set up now... Here we go. For the old channel. One of the cool things about the way that the, um, the cube off was set up now is that uh, by making it a week weekend long event, by having it take two days, it gave people time to tune in and actually catch it. If you're like, okay, it's just like out of 10 drafts, then the whole event only takes five hours and there's no chance for it to build. There's no chance for it. I had, I had fucking over 3000 viewers at three in the morning. That wouldn't happen any other way. So if you're trying to build hype, if you're trying to build momentum for the streamers, 
and the charity. Then I think the way we did it was really, really good. I wouldn't have wanted to do more than the two days. It kind of felt like recovering from a 24-hour stream. But a lot of the fun of it was similar to like the fun of a 24-hour stream, too. It's an event, right? Folks like events. They tune in for them. Oh shit, what up? Avenger works. Coolgan's Command works. Thief works. I might just grab the Sanctum, though. Let's grab a land here. I'll do the Coolgan's Command. Hey, old man Kinzer. Thanks for the sub. The 24 months there. Old man says, wow, already two years of looking at that asshole. And now I'm just watching Community so good. Thanks for keeping me entertained. God, this is hard. I want that Scarab God real bad, but I can take Tree Speaker there. Isn't that Tree Speaker late? Isn't that like the latest fucking Tree Speaker you've ever seen? I like the fetch land here a lot. I like Leovold a lot. We're gonna take the prime time, I think. Renin six would be decent, but we don't. We only have like one fetch right now. I'm glad you liked the Kiwi Splat. I had a lot of fun too. Even when I wasn't drafting, I was having a lot of fun flicking between the different channels and watching everybody else cube. Everyone else in, in competitive mode. Very late Scarab God, super late Scarab God. Scarab God's so good too. It's like a, just an unreasonably good card. It was really hard to pass it there for Tree Speaker. I think I made the correct pick, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to make the correct pick. What was the greatest moment of the weekend? Oh, probably the, the heads up against uh, Jim Davis. The fact that we then, like, that it was a two-trophy swing, because we were both in the finals, right? We were both 2-0. and oh. The fact that it was the the swing that, like, won it for us, because we would have been tied otherwise. And that he had that long streak of just, like, not... He started out so strong, right? Like, getting, like, three out of four trophies. And then we beat him, and he just didn't trophy at all after that. I mean, it would have it would have been terrible if the opposite had happened, right? <laughs> that would have been my least favorite part of the weekend if if the opposite had happened, but but it happened this way, so it was my favorite. He handled it super well, too. Right now I'm looking at Search for Tomorrow. I'm also looking at the Steam Vents. I think we take the Vents. I think we're gonna end up with enough playables. This one we can get with Arid Mesa. Wow, isn't that a late Mana Vault? Can we use Mana Vault? We can't use it for this one. We're gonna have Steam Vent, so we don't need the Valk. Now that is pretty good with Omnath. I don't know how many fucking planes I want to put in my mana base, though. Yeah, fuck that. Here we go. Here we go. There's a couple other nice ones. Word of Foothills, Shellbuck Isle, those would both be gas, but having something else to channel into, as well as another Golos hit, it's pretty good. This is almost like too much blue fixing. We passed a Tundra earlier, too. I guess we grab it, though. Can I link that video? Um, it's on my... It's on my YouTube. 
it was fairly early on. Here, I'll just fucking link my YouTube. That'll be the easiest. <laughs> it's yeah it should be the last match oh Puelas is already there it should be the last match of that I guess I'll play a Niv why not huh why not hmm Did I want C8? I did not. What did it take, o take over? Who did the opening song for my YouTube? The band is Howling Giant. They are pretty great. Do we have enough for Niv? Niv as a 5 minute 6-6 six, six is already good enough, but yes, we have plenty for Niv. Rain 6 and Leo. Yeah, I probably would have drafted Leo. That's kind of whatever. We only have one fetch. It's not the best right in six pile. We have a an excess of playables here anyway. Kind of whatever. I grabbed the Lotus Petal with the idea that we might want to turn one in the channel, but I don't think it quite fits the rest of our deck. Pilgrim's coming out. I don't think we need these shitty five drops. This mid-range trash. Get out of here. I want to cut one of my X spells. Maybe the return. Return's a hit for um, Niv, though. Well, this is kind of a lot, right? Three X spells. Kind of dilutes our Golos. Well, Treasure Cruise. Treasure Cruise is good here just because, like, we don't actually care how much the draw spell costs. Like, we're playing Wake and stuff, right? And it's like, tap two lands, Treasure Cruise. It's like a Harmonize. We might cut it because we don't need it. You know, maybe we just have enough value in other places that we don't need it. this trophy. It's another Niv hit, but also who cares? Niv drawing like one or two cards isn't that different from drawing Niv drawing three cards. It's still a fucking 6-6 six, six flyer. I actually like the Night of the Reliquary, I think. I think it's really good with the Somnath. I think that's gonna pop off. Double black for casualties. So that's a good point. If we cut the casualties, then we only need to play a, like a single swamp. Whereas if we play the casualties, then we can have, it, have to have two. It's such a good card. And we might be weak on like answers to planeswalkers now without the casualties in here. Like maybe we have to bring the trophy in now.
something like that. Perfect. Omnath does not work for Niv, unless you're using it to cast Niv, in which case that's awesome. Why not play Tarpid? What do you want to cut for the tar pit? You want to cut one of my forests? I have the turn two channel less often. Just think through it. Instead of like, why not? Think, think, think what it actually means to have the tar pit. What, what are you cutting for it? Is it worth the trade off? No card is ever free, right? It always costs a slot. What slot is it taking? A lot of times you can answer your own questions if you think through, think through the next level. Oh yeah, we very much need our basics here. We have a uh, Secure Tribe Builder, Cultivate, Search for Tomorrow. All of those cards care about basics. library. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you a secret about library. It's better than Creeping Tar Pit. I love Creeping Tar Pit. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love Creeping Tar Pit more than pretty much any anybody. It's not better than Library of Alexandria. Turn to suspend ancestral vision. Sure. So ideally, we'd be able to save this Arid Mesa for post Omnath. We'll see. Oh man, we can cast Wake off of the Omnath mana. Flock, thanks to the sub, thanks to the 30 months. So that was a that was about as good as you can expect from an Omnath, right? Fetch into Marari's Wake into Hydroid Crisis. 
Cheese! Some math card seems good. What one was it printed? This last year? Oh yeah, no, it's nutty. <laughs> if there's a card that was printed in the literal last year, it's in the Vintage Cube. It's probably good. It's probably decent. You think this is Skater Punk? This is Ska, friend. <laughs> they just played a bunch of islands. They just played a, a smattering of islands. I'm gonna bring in the return. Teferi's pretty nutty against Ancestral Vision, if we get to land it. You know it's Ska because the horns? Yeah. If there's a bunch of derfy horns, then it's Ska. <laughs> if it makes you feel like two-stepping, that's probably Ska. That's a few genres, so... <clears throat> I think we mull them. Yeah! Yeah! You know it's Scott because it's less than Jake? Yeah. <laughs> also valid. Yeah, Morrissey, what genre do you play? Sorry if I've asked you that before. We'll end up regrabbing the Solemn. I almost want a forest. If I could swap this knight for that Niv that we bottomed earlier, I would happily do that. At least we're shuffling the Niv back in. Yeah, no, you're fine, Mad Mage. Your guess of Skater Punk was not like wildly off the mark or anything like that. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to get on your case or whatever immediately snap it off just firing off the elder the play around stifle over there Scott or punk I like it I like it. Alright, I guess I do this now. Four cards is enough, right? Even if two of them are basics they just grabbed. I think it's enough. My desire three basics. <laughs> All right. And then they just used the land fodder to to cruise. Well, that went poor lane. Uh oh. I don't think you fire off turnabout here unless you uh. <laughs> Unless you're gonna do something sweet. At least we get to shuffle this fucking terrible hand away. God, I hope turnabout's the only way of winning.
<laughs> yeah, Brectus's return is returned. Hey, Dark Bro 66, thanks for the sub, thanks for the two months. Oh man, we can draw off library though. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think we can channel into Omnath plus prime time. I don't think we can do that. Let's lead on channel, see what they do. Aggressive, thanks for the resub, thanks for the 17 months. Hmm. Yeah, I feel favored. Making sure they can't down tick the Narset. This opens them up to like playing on the draw seven or whatever, but hitting them for six with prime time means that we have lethal next turn. So I think it's worth the risk to reward there. I think literally every time they played a draw seven, and they played like three or four, <laughs> I think literally every time they played one, we ended with, uh, with a mind twist or a Rakdos return in our hand. They just couldn't catch a break there. Kind of hilarious that when they nuked us down to one card, it was still Mind Twist. I was like, hey, I have this one! How's that? Oh, it's as good as your seven cards. Well, well, how about that? That doesn't seem fair. That my one card would be as good as your seven. How many trophies did it finish with during the charity event? Uh, we ended up with nine trophies. Hmm. 
with 19 attempts, so... Very close to a 50% trophy rate. Which is very good, very good for me. Usually I trophy something like one drafts in three or something. One in three, one in four. I think it's like a reasonable conversion rate. For any limited format. But I was running pretty hot. And tryharding, you know. Like a lot of times... Like, my regular trophy rate is also taking into consideration that I'm usually doing, like, a few steps a night. So if I only do four or five drafts a night, then it's like 40% of my drafts are steps. And then a lot of the times, like, I'm, like, trying out shit because I think it would be fun or, or crazy or whatever. As opposed to necessarily tryharding during my normal stream. So it's kind of graf gratifying to turn it up, but, but, Vintage Cube is, you know, a super high variance format. We also, like, can't take too much from it. I usually do a period, a period. Stay on the front page during a vintage cube. Usually the cubes that I don't are the ones that are only around for a week, and I only draft them for a few days. So we're gonna have to pay a mana for this search for tomorrow. And that's totally fine. So we can't wake here, but we could Hunmaster or Omnath. I feel like Omnathing. We could draw a, a land and fire off Secure Tribe Elder too. This worked out, didn't it? <laughs> Not a bad little turn. You remember that time we played a 4 4 that drew a card for zero mana? I remember that. Is that math good? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's fine. Relic Warder coming down. I'm glad it's happening this turn. Nah, not my Solemn. That's the best artifact slash enchantment in my deck. We could just pass the turn, flip on Master, kill the Relic Order, get our Solemn back. I don't know. Flame Wake seems better. You hate this cube so much? Oh no, Entropic Blade. Yeah, that's rough. Everyone goes through win streaks and losing streaks, though, and it is a pretty high variance format. Definitely been there before. When we need opponents to back me down to 22. Landing.
Yeah, it's possible I should've just played Krasis here. The danger being that if they get in, I don't think they would've land dropped before getting though. Snake, the chonkiest. Chonk Daddy, come to town. I did a D&D one-shot that was set in Ravnica, and we encountered a Hydroid Krasis, and I did not recognize it from the description. <laughs> care about this trophy, this assassin's trophy. I guess I could leave green-black floating. Yeah, Crocusing uh, Chad is the plan here, for sure. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. What if they have balance, huh? I guess if they have balance, we just untap and Emrakul them. It'd be weird to play balance in the Falia deck. No, I'm awake. Indestructible, shame. Pass with the Crocus, and then even if they top deck to Sweeper or whatever, we have Crocus to save it. Why we need dumps their hand so quickly? You don't want to play cards like Mind Twist, especially on the draw. The rest of this looks good though. Those uh, those medium five mana green cards, those mid range cards are actually fine here. They don't answer the flyers, but they're fine otherwise. I think I'm just gonna submit. 
FTK is not too slow, and I should have added it, but I didn't. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Hopefully not. CFTK would have just ran into this benevolent bodyguard, so that's why that's why I didn't board it in to play around protection or something. Not the worst turn two, hum. Can't do much with this Ulamog unless we draw a wake. I guess we're getting closer. Omnath would be Dece. Omnath and Knight on the same turn. Actually, I don't even know if he would Knight or if he'd save it. Well, yeah, yeah, because then the knight would trigger the Omnath the turn after. Let's think about, like, saving there in Mesa. See if we can use Omnath to cast Ulamog, but... But yeah, knight just does it, huh? It's weird when you're, like, hoping to draw Omnath instead of prime time. <laughs> hey, Mackie, thanks for 47 months there. Oh, uh, no, don't do that. Hold on, that's not kind. That's not a kind thing to do. I'm not, I'm not mucking with your shit! How dare they disrupt me. No one makes me bleed my own blood. Cool, Rick Little Loden. I feel like this copter is gonna murder me. Here. I kind of to grab both shocks just so there'd be like no chance of me having to pay two. But getting a black source makes sense and getting the crocus makes sense. Only nine mana towards Ulamog next turn. Only the mountain and the plains there, so we have aired mace options. We drew Wake here, we'd only have 10 mana. We wouldn't, we'd be short one for Ulamog. I think we need Krasis. I think we need to top deck Krasis. I think that's our, our out, so to speak. Yeah, Bite Me Bambi, hell of a band, huh? No, that's not what we drew.
10 mana? Yeah, well, we have an 11 mana card. You were joking about game three? Apparently not! I blame you. I blame you personally. Do we get to fairy? Let's get to fairy. It's not a bad card or anything like that. But I think you have to gaze better. Well, Whisperwood, I talked earlier about how, like, the, the mid-range five drops are actually fine in the matchup, but they don't answer flyers. And so far, that's the only way they've beaten us, right? I think I gotta replace something. I think there's only so many spots. Fair enough. Cyborg plans are a little too cute. Step one, destroy the deck to fit in a removal spell. Nope, not doing that. Deck's great. I think the matchup is solid. Just need to curve out. Do good things. I'd be tempted to keep this if I knew, if I didn't know the matchup, right? If we were facing an unknown opponent. I think I'm all this. This looks better. Fits my range of acceptable keeps here. I it's only okay because they might have swords or path. Yeah, they need, they need one of two very specific answers or they're just dead. <laughs> I guess Caracas would do it too. I think that's more than okay. No! Oh, yeah, sure. Why are they, why are they playing something out? They just have to sack it to Annihilator. Should we save it for them? <laughs> Carcass Puff the Kytheon? <laughs> Run, little Kytheon! Ooh, back to back finals. I mean, someone just waiting. If this hand had a second land, even a non-green land, over one of the green dorks, I would keep it for the turn two Golos. Inquisition. Inquisition! Come on, Inquisition! Or Duress! We'll take Duress, too! Ooh. What's my biggest Guilty Pleasure album? I mean, we were just listening to Less Than Jake. A lot of, I don't, I don't really feel guilt. I don't really feel guilt or shame. I kind of just enjoy what I enjoy. 
Like, the Aquabats started as a guilty pleasure, and now they're just a pleasure. They're just fucking amazing. There's a lot of genres of music that I used to be, like, fairly dismissive of. That I just legitimately enjoy now. We're gonna grab the Swamp because they are in Mesa can get uh, Blue Source from Steam Vents. Not, not like Taylor Swift. <laughs> I actually do listen to more uh, pop music than I used to. Enjoy Twisted Tea. Yeah, it's it's Dees. It's fine. I thought about I thought about getting a can, and then every time I like every time I punted, just like, fucking bash it on my head. And probably probably not a healthy <laughs> bit for a stream. Not the healthiest gimmick. Oh fuck. You blame me for your girlfriend now really like loving King Gizzard. It sounds like your girlfriend has good taste. King Gizzard's amazing. Why not healthy? <laughs> what bashing a twisted tea into your head every every time you make a mistake? I usually make like at least one mistake a stream, so probably be rough. On the high end, but still. You see Poppy as a guilty pleasure. Interesting. A lot of Poppy's stuff is not actually pop. Gets a little experimental sometimes. It's a little abrasive. Any land now? I don't know. I don't know if we just want any land. I kinda wanna Golos with Karakas up. So they can't just do ready yet. It does set us up for Niv. I guess we can do the same trick with Niv, huh? Right, yeah, yeah. No, the first the first album's definitely pop. For sure. Prime time next turn. Islands are still red, so I wanted to grab a green source. And then we can play infinite nibs after that. Hey Samuel Donuka, thanks for the 33 months. An auspicious day, subversary day! Thanks for the kind words, Samuel Donuka. I don't know Paul Myers, I'm not familiar with the artist. If you feel guilty about listening to the music, then that's your guilty pleasure. <laughs> well, I'm glad they're doing this instead of getting my prime time next turn.
But it's a weird spot where they, like, kind of have to downtick to ready to keep me from activating Golos. But then they're also, like, losing resources when they do that. Oh, they're at, Well, I guess they're only losing loyalty, huh? Because it's you may sacrifice. Not the end of the world. Alright, let's play this Niv. Maybe. Actually, we're getting pretty close to goals plus activate. Should I just play both? No black. I mean, I could have left it up if I wanted to cast both. I'm still leaving up the Crocus friend. Hmm. Alright, well, that wins. Practice return, not just good at dumping their hand, but also really good at uh, popping planeswalkers. Gives a little bit more freedom. Kulligan's command looks great. Trophy looks great. Not sure what we're cutting for this return. Maybe I'll master. Yeah, I think it's all master or tree speaker. I think tree speaker stays. We'd have to, yeah, we'd have to arrange the mana base differently if we wanted to bring in casualties. We could do, but I don't think it's worth it. I think that's pretty close, Mark Chalice. Just, like, eyeballing your list. Like, not putting a ton of thought into it. Seems right, though. Cradle's better than library? Not here it isn't. <laughs> library being good in like literally every cube deck. Whereas Cradle is good in exactly one cube deck. Tilts the needle pretty far, I think. I think I'm supposed to mull this. This seems kind of miserable. Not doing anything till turn three. Sheldox, CJ. Yeah, Sheldox up there. So I think Arid Mason's getting steam bent, so I'm gonna grab a forest here, and then we won't have a black source, unfortunately, but having a green seems more important.
I guess Teferi could bounce Solemn. Well, not anymore. Opposition Agent rocked me earlier, is why I'm cracking my fetch as a sorcery. You'd put Strip Mine below Library and Academy. I'd have Strip Mine actually fairly low. Usually, if you want to do busted stuff with it in cube, well, you need like a two or three card combo, and I have it below Cradle. And Shell Dark. Well, he doesn't help, help us cast Omnath, but it's very close to playing Emrakul. A draw kind of needs to cultivate, doesn't it? Hull Breacher? Hull Breacher's not in the cube. Did I say Hull Breacher? I'm an Opposition Agent. We got rock rocked by Opposition Agent. I think Hull Breacher would be fine in this cube. They cut it last minute for some reason. Because they were cowards, that's why. This card was good in a completely different format. Can't allow it in the format with fucking <laughs> Black Lotus and the Soul Ring and Channel and stuff. You're way too good. I just don't think the, the fun argument holds much, much uh, weight in a format that has like Oko and Mind Twist in it <laughs> and Channel. Seems a little random. It had serious bugs. Did it have any bugs with the cards that are actually in the cube though? I only saw it having bugs with like Gear Reach Sanctum. Bug? What's the Metamorphose bug? You hear plus one an opponent with Dak cause you to discard two. I literally made that play in the um, in the Supreme Cube, and that's not how it worked for me. Well, it worked fine for me. Maybe that's survival bias. Glenn is such a miserable card. Mm. 
where you click too fast and it makes random mana for you. Yeah, I mean, that's any card that names a color, though. And it's answered by being conscious of it and slowing down and not clicking too fast, I guess. Like, you're not gonna cut Iona from the cube for the same reason, right? We're gonna survive quite long enough for the summer pull. I think we're gonna be a turn short. Even if we draw land here, we're a mana short. And trophy adds an instant, but they decide land to counter the trophy and just kill us next turn. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what we could draw. Aired Mace is already in the graveyard. GG. Well, it tried. Our deck finally stopped. Finally stopped working right there in the finals. That's a heck of a card. Heck of a card deck, Lindalindra. No shame in losing to that one. Especially that one, like, plus, like, Grave Titan or whatever. Very different than how the first game went. Yeah, fresh draft, huh? It's like a toasty pair of undies right out of the dryer. 